We have today John Douglas. Douglas is a, a senior research fellow at the Center for Studies in Higher Education at the University of California, Berkeley. It's a good center and it's a very good research university and they have the, the oldest center for studies in regarding higher education. And he'll be, he's visiting Unicamp for a month and he'll be talking today with us about uh, the role of a research university in the international context and how a Brazilian university like Unicamp that has, sees itself as a research institution, how it should play this role, what's the, how, what Unicamp could do to, to improve and, and, and be more present in an international contest. And also we'll be talking about a program of uh, a group of public universities in the United States that have a very good uh, system of assessing the experience that students have during their undergraduate programs. Okay, John, thank you for, for your, your time and your, your visit to Unicamp. So what's, uh, what is uh, the role of a university like Unicamp that now that you have a better feeling of its, uh, how it works and how it sees itself? What would be uh, the way for Unicamp to be more engaged or engage more uh, uh, other actors, other institutions in the world now that uh, we have this more and more uh, international roles for research universities? Well, first I want to say how impressed I am by Unicamp and uh, um, that it really is a significant producer of research. Um, that it really plays the role of a major research university in Brazil. And uh, I'm sure over time it will continue this trajectory. And it's a really quite uh, uh, sophisticated process uh, or organization and its efforts to try to um, uh, Im improve itself, become more of a player internationally. If you look at international, like how do universities interact inter internationally? I mean, it really comes down to people and how they interact. So the question is, well, how much are faculty uh, getting out and perhaps participating or doing joint projects with other faculty in other parts of the world or giving presentations on their research? Uh, my sense is that actually, uh, you know, faculty at Unicamp have that on their mind. They're doing that. Uh, the, the university shows up in citation analysis and these kinds of things in terms of research activity. Uh, at the student level is probably the other very important area of interaction. Perhaps that's a little bit more limited at this time, uh, and there are a lot of kind of barriers uh, that uh, a university faces in that regard. For example, uh, from what I understand in uh, talking with you and other colleagues here, um, uh, the ability to offer courses in English, for example, in order to draw other students uh, from out throughout the world is a very important market advantage that, mm. say, universities such as Berkeley have. So you're thinking of how that can be developed more fully. Uh, uh, but it seems, so those are areas that relate to what Unicamp, Unicamp can do, but also what your national policy framework is, what your, what the expectations are in society in Brazil or in Sao Paulo. So in that area, I think it does feel that you have a long ways to go, perhaps, to become a more real, real international player uh, in terms of attracting students and, I would assume, also sending students to other parts of the world or other universities. In the U.S. now, what uh, is the, the trend in terms of sending the, the institution's students abroad? Yes. Uh, I've, I've read that some universities are now requiring a uh, stay of sometimes one semester or maybe even a year for all their st undergraduate students, or I'm not sure if all, but they really have this, this requirement of involving students in having a, a foreign, a abroad uh, experience in, in institutions. So how is it playing in the U.S.? How do you see that? Well, it's, it's a growing value. Uh, but if you look, to, if you des disaggregate the various institutional types, it's perhaps not as impressive as you might think. 
But if you're looking at major research universities or, you know, we have a, a tradition of liberal arts colleges, then the education abroad component is very a high participatory level. So it's really among certain kinds of institutions that you're getting a high level of people. And just to get into the complexity of these things, which exists wherever you are, you find a certain socioeconomic group is participating. So we're, you know, concerned about those kinds of things. How can we get more low-income uh, students from low-income families to go uh, for, a, for a semester or these kinds of things? So uh, um, I think there is obviously a lot of Americans who go off for a year program, and then there's certain kind of constructs. They tend to go to programs in which the university uh, often has its own program itself. They don't integrate into a university. This is The University of California actually does uh, integrate students into other inst- partner institutions, so it's a bit different than most. But most set up their own programs, so there's these kind of dynamics. Well, how much are they being integrated mm-hmm. into the uni- home university? I would say uh, on the other side of the fence, how many students are coming to the United States what you find is that the United States has a tradition and history of attracting graduate students to its major universities, and you kind of see it bleeding down to others, but it's still a kind of a certain echelon of institutional types, and you're an example since you went to Berkeley. Uh, And uh, uh, so this is obviously a very important part of our internationalization uh, and has been a tremendous tool to bringing talent from throughout the world and many Get their degrees and go home, <laughs> and do uh, and some stay. Some stay, and we have. It's been an absolutely essential element of our economic development and growth. If you look at high tech industries, such as in Silicon Valley, around a third or so of all the startups in Silicon Valley are from uh, recent immigrant groups. Most of, most who came to go to a place like Berkeley or Stanford or or other institutions, and then ended up um, being able to stay. Uh, if you go to the undergraduate level, it's a, perhaps it's not really understood. There really is not that many international students when you look at the totality of the higher ed system. It's only about 3% at the undergraduate level. If you go to Europe, you'll see it's more like 10 to 12%. Maybe a third of those are EU students, so we could argue about what's the right number. Or, you know, But it's a much more robust element. Um, I think the U.S. needs to have a much more aggressive policy to bring in more uh, low, I mean, uh, undergraduate students and integrate them more into um, helping to change the MLU. So when I say all of